You're watching Hubware Galactic here on the Hubnet. Here are tonight's headlines. The UEE are still having problems counteracting illegal methods for criminals to wipe their records. After commenting on the issue, a prime advocacy commissioner was laid off. Leilani Addison has made her first year as Imperator, and we take a look at her promises and accomplishments. And since five years back we've seen more civilian spacecraft unveiled than ever before. Are we headed toward a golden era in aerospace aviation? And what does that mean for you, citizens and civilians of the Empire? I'm Oliver Zark, and you're watching the first awesome. broadcast of Hubwire Galactic. Nice! I hope you guys have been following here on the channel. Such good content. We begin tonight's report by taking a look at the state of the Imperial Justice System. Last week, Prime Commissioner Jordan of the Terran Advocacy Branch was laid off after making some loud remarks about the Imperial Justice System to Transitionalist Senator Mirango at a charity dinner party in Lear. The comments made by Commissioner Jordan indicate the UEE are well aware of the ineffectivity in the Imperial Justice System. We have made an effort to fully understand Commissioner Jordan's statement and sent out our reporter to investigate. Here's the story. It was during a charity event in Lyre on Cassell where Advocacy Commissioner Jordan of the Terran Ad This is awesome. Who's doing the voice work here? This sounds like Jax for God's sake. Who's our getting for the voice work on this? That voice that voice acting is point on, dude. That's great. Advocacy branch was heard making negative remarks on the Imperial Justice System. When we caught up with him outside the establishment, Commissioner Jordan went on further and said the amount of digitally forced alterations to Imperial criminal records, together with the amount of prison escapes, earned the <laughs> Imperial Justice Department the spot as the least effective justice system since the dawn of democracy. During our talk, Commissioner Jordan mostly focused on privately owned correctional facilities. How something like being a great miner can somehow be connected to your rehabilitation is quite fra- <laughs> Okay, this is blowing my mind. This is so very good. This is already just so very, very good, man. Frankly, beyond me. If you're involved in organized crime, chances are you'll get some help finding the valuable ore. Or you know someone who can help you. They even sell their info and even their merits to the highest bidder. It's outrageous. Criminal networks supposedly station dedicated miners inside the facilities and keep the most valuable ore to themselves. Therefore, being imprisoned often, and the experience that comes with it, is in that regard beneficial to your jail time. <laughs> if you're a simple civilian with no criminal record, you are prone to do more time than repeat offenders. Commissioner Jordan continued, <laughs> No, the system is corrupt and is no more than a mining business exploiting the innocent and rewarding the actual offenders for their mining expertise. It's worth noting, Commissioner Jordan's youngest daughter was recently imprisoned after f <laughs> Please developers, please caught up here and work on the hair. We're waiting for the hair patch. We're still, we're still waiting for the hair patch. Falling asleep at the controls of her 300i and colliding with a parked cruise ship. But when asked about it, Thank Jordan you, mockingly said, I'm actually sad my daughter is not a criminal, because if she was, she could have just walked out with the 50 other daily SKPs. <laughs> he left the conversation just as we were about to ask him how he felt about how his daughter would have died if this was a few years ago, before the regeneration program started. Two days later, news broke that the Prime Advocacy Office is appointing a new commissioner. Jordan was laid off for making political statements while in the role of a government official. For Hubwa Galactic, I'm Simon Wolf. After hearing about the decision to terminate Jordan's contract, we reached out to him for a comment, but his office rejected our offer. And who knows, maybe we'll see him in the primary elections in eight years, advocating for Justice Department reforms. And speaking of the Imperator's seat, Imperator Addison has now held the seat for a year. But what were her promises? And what has she accomplished during this time? Let's head over to our reporter <laughs> right and up. take a look. Leilani Addison is a surprise no one believed in, but somehow everyone voted for. Well, not everyone, but her landslide victory over runner up. The, this is great. Like, kudos to Zark Media and kudos to the people who are like involved with this, these reporters are like fantastic like having these different reporters like this is really well done this is so well done 
well, how many, hold on a second. I'm so sorry to interrupt this. Only 2000 subscribers. Okay. When we found this channel, he had like, I, I want to say at a couple hundred, like maybe five, six, seven hundred. That was a couple months ago. We've been watching it and we've been, we've been linking it. We've been linking it on every highlight. I pushed out to my own channel. This is what we do here on this channel. Find these golden nuggets for everyone so we can share the wealth and, you know, have a good time and be entertained. And it's nice to see they've grown to 2,000 subscribers. It's nice to see Zark get over 2,000. But God damn, only 2,000? How does this channel only have 2,000 subscribers right now? This channel should have more subscribers than me. <laughs> it's a truth bomb right there. I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> I'm keeping it real. This should have more than my, my, this audience here for this channel should be much bigger than my own. How about that? How about that for dissing my own self? Hey, you suck, DG. Why would you say that? Why would you say that about me? I'm just letting you know. This is, this is your multiple personality. One of your multiple personalities. You suck, DG. You suck. You're an asshole. I should have the most subscribers ever. Who are you? Get out of my brain. You don't belong here. All right, fine. All right, I'm going. Up Universalist Titus Costigan is one for the history archives. One standard Earth year has now passed since her inauguration, so let's summarize and ask ourselves what has she actually accomplished? Saying that Addison is a new player in the political landscape would be putting it mildly. Just two years prior to the primary enrollment, Addison was appointed Dean of Applied Science at Mentor University, and after leaving her academic seat in 2947, she did so with little to no political experience. There's no question Addison's administration has had a rocky start. Even in her first speech as Imperator in Braja on OEA 3, wow, much of her powerful awesome. and expressive vocabulary had been calibrated for the Imperator position and replaced by cautious wording and political yeah, aspirations I, I was rather not an than Addison promises. Guy. I think when I she did addressed her well. first act promise regarding loosening the restrictions on AI, she talked more about carving a path for the act rather than having it realized. She also cautioned the public to not expect to see any changes in restrictions for several years. Much of Addison's first year has been characterized by great ideas and unfulfilled promises. Not only is her act Down on loosening Addison. AI restrictions years totally away from agree. concrete form, her ideas on yeah, terraforming Horus too are also at a standstill. This summer, she brought forward Na Hueyong Tiyi of Oya 2 as her nominee for becoming the UEE ambassador to the Xi'an Empire. But when the decision was put in the hands of the Senate, her somewhat exciting nomination fell flat. Even her desire to increase funding for education and scientific research has been openly criticized by senators going on record to call her and budget myself. astronomical, economically ignorant, and a grave threat to the fiscal future wow. of the Empire. Addison's first year has been slow, and her efforts have mostly come to nothing. However, being as politically inexperienced as she is, this is certainly expected. And she hates humans. She hates humans. She loves robots. I, I, I would say Addison. This is this is this is real news here. I'm I'm going to be the Alex Jones of Star Citizen. She loves robots. She also loves frogs. <laughs> she loves robots over humans. <laughs> That's my Alex Jones impression. This Addison, let me tell you something about this Addison. This Addison loves robots. Actual robots. Robots over humans. That's the agenda here that we're dealing with with Addison. Robots over humans. Do you want to be somebody who loves robots over humans? No. No, you don't. She also loves frogs. And committing to a huge societal change like the Regeneration Program was certainly easier for someone not indoctrinated by the slow pace of Senate politics. A fair warning for Addison though, if you manage to loosen AI restrictions and something like the Great Mars Tragedy or Artemis or the Horus <laughs> Incident were to happen again, we hope you know the Empire will not see any AI restrictions loosening for centuries. Organs you are taking a leap of faith, but is this the right time? We don't know, but we will know for sure before 2960. For Hubwire Galactic, I'm Aria Alet. It will be exciting to follow the career of Imperator <laughs> Addison. This is a big step from her academic life at Mentor University and only time will tell if her feet will grow big enough to fill these shoes. Now She's instead got tiny of the future, feet. let's focus on the past. Listen, listen, Addison has tiny feet. Not a lot of people know this, but I got inside information. I got pictures. I got pictures from certain insiders on her feet.
She's got small feet. You can't trust people with small feet. <laughs> and more specifically, the Triennial Ship Index that was recently released. Every three years, the Triennial Ship Index looks at recent ship and vehicle falls <laughs> as an indicator for in which direction our empire is headed. Here's our reporter to explain more. Every three years, the Triennial Ship Index provides insight into where the Empire is heading in terms of economy, market shares, coming career opportunities, and other... Listen, I want all that information once quantum hits to be actually real. This is something I've said a billion times and I'll say it again because I am that passionate about it. I want that information displayed on all these screens to be real-time information in the game that's directly uh, connected to quantum that shows me the actual true supply and demand from the algo and I want to see it displayed on the screen. I don't want just like placeholders. I've said this a thousand times. I'm very adamant about this. I want to see live screens with live charts, live data, all real-time in the game. That's the goal. Don't ever forget it. Be vocal about it and tell them that's what you want. Just keep saying it and that'll happen. So have been rated by the public in the IAE ship showdown for the last three years and draws conclusions based on that data. Ships are divided into categories of civilian, military, and industry. Each category is awarded one to five points depending on how far the ships of the particular category <laughs> got in the showdown. And here you can see the Don't yearly statistics started. for each category where the red line is for military ships, yellow for industry, and blue for civilian sector vessels. We can see that in 2019, people were more keen on military ships, but the public interest has now turned towards the civilian sector, which in 2951 was quite evident with the final four ships all representing the civilian sector. This could be indicative of how our thinking is affected by having a new peace-oriented imperator, or how people feel right, about Ash. the war effort against the Van Duel, but to know with certainty one would have to conduct further polls and research. We took to the bustling parks of Terra- That's interesting information, you know, that's, a, that's actually quite interesting information that more civvy ships are like the fucking uh, you know, th that are being bought more or more pledges are going towards them than uh, military or industrial ship. That's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, Ash says when Sig uh, finally hires Ravier and makes a uh, Galag uh, Galactic Logistics an in-house app, we will have it. Absolutely, Ash. Uh, Ravier is a member and he's actually a patron here of DG360. I love Rave. Rave's a cool dude. Uh, and if, uh, you know, plug, plug and promotion to, uh, galactic logistics. I use them all the time. Good, good fucking website. Good person. Nice dude. Love rave. There is capital prime to ask people which ship they would have wanted to see win the 2951 ship showdown. Hmm. I'd say the RSI Phoenix. I don't think I remember last time it won, if it ever did. I would have wanted to see the Constellation Phoenix win the showdown, since I'm a tour guide. It was neat to see things turned on their head like that, but I really prefer the Constellation Aquila. Thing is a lot more useful than the Argo Cargo. I kinda like the uh, concept <laughs> of the uh, Drake Herald. Look at that guy's mouth. Look at that. You can't trust that. You can't trust this guy. Look at this guy's mouth here. That is an alien hybrid. That is an alien hybrid. That is not a human being. You cannot listen to him. That is definitely an alien hybrid. Look at that. Look at that. I kind of like the uh, concept of the uh, Drake Herald, to be fair. Uh, it, it's like a flying basement. The public seemed to agree with the index <laughs> favoring the civilian sector. What's also worth noting is the total yeah. price tag for the Final right. Four ships, which have seen a yearly decrease suggesting a trend where pilots are going for affordable options. However, even though the 2951 finalists in total have the cheapest price tag ever, it is largely due to the Argo <laughs> and TUV cargo winning head. the showdown. <laughs> Perfectly timed Kuwato fucking thank you Anarchy. He's on the ball. Look at Anarchy. That's why he's the moderator. That's why he has a sword. Look at that. Thank you. That was a perfectly timed Kuwato DG fucking uh tribute. <laughs> that was so <laughs> Guy looked like Kuwato, didn't he? I like the total recall head that the hammer put in there as well. That was fucking brilliant. You guys are really, you guys, this is, this is highbrow. This is a highbrow intellectual audience. You understand? It was awesome. <laughs> awesome. The very affordable MPG aside, the 2951 Final Four featured luxury yachts and expensive <laughs> cargo haulers. The Triennial Ship Index suggests the public is pulling towards peace, but also poverty, with one of the cheapest ships available on the market receiving the most votes. Have too many resources been spent on the war effort? Has the public been taxed too heavily? The answers we get from the Triennial Ship Index this year are formulated as questions rather than answers, and they are pointing their fingers towards Absolutely, the decision makers.
For Hubwire Galactic, I'm Aaron Harper. Personally, I'm excited to see the civilian sector expand. The Empire has seen much violence lately, so seeing the civilian sector grow is a most welcome change. The Triennial Ship Index will be back in 2955. That's all we had today. I'm Oliver Zar. That was awesome. Thank you, Sorio. By the way, shout out to my friend Sorio over Mon Mongrel Squad, who literally took the day off to be here. Mon uh, listen to me. I love Mongrel and I love Sorio. Sorio is like hardcore DG360 member here. Definitely a member of the fam. Absolutely love you, Sorio. You have a good day, bro. You have a good day. Thanks for joining us here, dude. Always love when you're around on stream, man. Always love it. And I'll tell you something here. My advice to Zark Media is to continue the story line of Oliver Zark in conjunction with these news stories here, which was all relevant information. This is wonderful to see.